Dr. Bishop is currently the principal of Sunshine Elementary School in Lehigh Acres, Florida. He has earned various degrees, including various degrees in zoology from Alabama A&M University, a Master of Education from Alabama A&M University with a concentration in biology, as well as a Master's from FGCU with a concentration in educational leadership. He has most recently completed his Doctor of Education in organi Organizational Leadership at Nova Southeastern University. Dr. Bishop has been committed to education since 1993. He currently provides leadership that ensures continuous improvement in measurable student performances and achievement in the largest elementary school in the district. Dr. Bishop has formerly worked at Tice Elementary Magnet <coughs> School in Fort Myers as the assistant principal and at Harnes Marsh Elementary School in Lehigh Acres, where he has established a school-wide professional learning community based upon the studies of Darfur and Acre. The concept of, professional learning, of a professional learning community is defined as a connected, highly qualified, and engaged group of educators passionately driven by change and ongoing action. These professional learning communities actively seek to, both, to involve both parents and students in very significant ways. Dr. Bishop currently serves on various committees, including the president of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, the choir director at St. John's First Missionary Baptist, and he is also a part of the Outstanding Young Men of America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Sunshine Elementary School's principal, Dr. Winston Bishop. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, now I feel comfortable with you all. Jenna, I was wondering who that was that you were announcing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome this, uh, this evening. I want to first of all thank the whole entire office of uh, Community Outreach for this opportunity. When they called me and asked me to do it, I was floored. And when I got up off the floor, I actually replied and said, yes, I would do it. <laughs> but um, I do thank them for that opportunity. And I thank the actual university, and it's kind of hard and kind of difficult to come back to your hometown sometimes, to this whole university. This was a town when I was here because it only had like four buildings, uh, literally four buildings, uh, academic A, B, and C, and then the big central office building. And they had two dormitories. And so uh, that was a few years ago when I graduated from here. But it's good to come back because I'm here uh, uh, quite a lot here on campus, but it's good to come back. And I hope to share with you tonight I hope to share with you some ideas as to where we are in education. And then after discussing where we are in education, then begin to talk about where we need to go in education. And I'm going to focus specifically on education as specific as relates to minorities. And I'm going to talk about education globally. And when I talk about it, and then I'm going to give you a chance to ask one question from the entire body. So during the time that I'm talking, you all come up with that one question that you all are going to come together to <coughs> ask me one question. And it better be one easy question, like what is my name or something. But I want for you all to, um, I'm used to, I'm not, I want you all to realize that when I'm in front of audiences, I like to get them actually involved in what's happening. And I can tell everything about what's on your face and all of this. So please, relax, smile, I'm going to teach you some things. You will grab us some things. I'm going to encourage your heart, your spirit, and your mind. And then we're going to ask that one question. And then uh, I can go over and I can grab me a cookie because my fear will be over at that time. So I, can... <laughs> I am so glad. Now, this is the very, very first time I was going to sit down, but I'm not used to sitting down and talking to people. But this is a lecture series, so I am going to do it for the very first time. Listen, I'm glad I brought my iPad because and this is the very first time that I'm speaking from my iPad. So if I get lost in something, you don't laugh at me. Because I'm used to, because I have a paper back there too, so I can read off the paper. But beginning with the complexities that we have for this postmodern education system that we're under right now, it requires a lot of us to have, I want to dispel some myths before we actually begin. I know that somewhere during the course of your learning, you have heard that knowledge is power. But I'm here to tell you that knowledge is not power. It's what you do with the knowledge that gives you the power. 
And also, if knowledge is only power, it becomes potential at that moment, which means absolutely nothing can happen. If you are the smartest person in the world and only you know that the smartest person in the world because you have not done anything with it. So your knowledge is only for you. And then I know that you have heard somewhere around the line that you are a product of your environment. I do not believe that either. I believe that you are a product of your experiences. You think about the moment of two people being in the same environment but having different experiences. They're going to produce two different people. And so when you're around in your environment and you create that experience on the inside of it. So that's how you become a product of your experience. And what we find is that in this educational system where we are right now, we have so much diversity that's going on inside of the public school system. A lot of diversity. And what that does is it answers the question to our educational programs, our facilities, our personnel that we actually hire, so that every student in the professional system can actually get what they need for learning. Now that is important, why? Because you are the product of that system. And the system wants to make sure that it is putting out the very best product. And what we have right now in our system, we have a whole lot of students who are not English language as their first learning, as their first language. We have a lot of students that have health needs. We have a lot of students that have transportation, housing needs, and they're having family issues. But we must address those issues in order for them to become a full student and getting the full measure of what is expected of them out of their education. And so that is his important role. And those are some of the things that we're facing right now inside of education. And when I mention postmodern education, meaning that it has not changed in hundreds of years, that we have been under the same educational paradigm for hundreds of years, and it has not changed. Recently, we're trying to get to some points where we are trying to make some changes, but it takes a lot of work because they're realizing that the old system is not working with the new population. Looking at this room right now, you can actually see the differences in the people that attend here at, at this university. You can see the differences in the people that attend Edison. You can see the differences in the people that attend high school. And each and every individual brings something different to the table. Each and every individual will require something different to learn. And each and every individual will require a different learning style. And they need something differently from what the education is offering them. And that is very, very important that we put ourselves in a position where we're able to offer you what it is that you need in order to be successful. Now, there are many questions that you can possibly ask yourself about how you're placed inside of society. See, some people start to question our character sometimes. They question our value and our experience in education. Some of them question our careers and our futures that we actually have. But you ask yourself, what role do minorities actually play in our educational system, in the educational debate? Have they ever listened to your voice to see what it is that you have to say? How many times have you had the opportunity to sit down with policymakers and lawmakers and educators to let them hear what your voice has to say? Regardless of where you are from, regardless of who you think you are, a voice is yours to have, and a voice is yours to share. And it is important that as we reach what education is going to be, then we need to make sure that we're sharing our voice so that we are actually heard. Looking at it, society's political and educational policies have, have some questions that we really have to, all, have to answer right now. And the reason why we have to answer them is because you are right now, and you are the future. So if we do not properly invest in you, then there will be a loss and there will be a gap. When I came here, way back, like way then, um, <laughs> when I came here, wait a minute, I was uh, 23 years old. You couldn't tell me anything, I was high and mighty. I had a master's degree in biology and with concentration in microbiology. You couldn't even tell me anything, right? Of course not. But then I came to my senses because society kicked me in the butt for things that I really was not ready for. I was not ready for what I thought I was stepped into, stepping into. Sure, I had the education. Sure, I could boast that I was young and all of this, and I had the education that some people have been waiting their whole lives to try to get. But it didn't do me any good because I was not ready for some of the things that society presented to me, which created an entire different lesson, which means that learning never, ever stops.
stops. Learning for me, learning for you, will never, ever <coughs> stop. So regardless of where you are in your educational moment right now, I want you to understand that your education that you are getting right now is not about you. It is about what you do with it. And I will say that again. Your education that you're getting is not about you. It's about what you choose to do with it. Because remember, having the knowledge does not give you the power. And so as we go through the moments of examining what education is and what it has to offer us, we can understand that there are several, several organizations out there trying to question and trying to settle what education should possibly be. Let's pretend that everyone in this entire room here was gifted. Think for a moment if you were. And if you're still gifted, you have to focus on the factors of some issues that deal with your personal development, your issues of power and class, your issues of the body, your issues of the spirit and the norm, issues of justice and diversity, issues of language and issues of discourse and issues of desire and passions and issue of your gender and issues of immigration and all of those things you have to deal with. The thing that you face in today that we have to recognize that we bring into, the, that you bring into the educational system that we must address is the fact that you know more now at your age than we did when we were your age. Because you have access to more. You have more opportunities for learning. You have more experiences that you could possibly even imagine. And we didn't have those during that time. Think about it. World Wide Web is only in a 20 year anniversary piece. You look at me. I was on a, Mac, on a Mac Apple computer, Apple IIe computer, with a big gigantic floppy disk, walking around trying to get things to be saved on it. I was doing COBOL and Fortran. All of those things, I know there was just all antique stuff. It was almost to you, it's almost like the caveman was writing on the wall. But that's what I had to deal with at that moment. But right now, look at what you have at your access. Look what you have at your fingertip. And you have not begun to tap into what you are able to do as far as the technological pieces of this society has to offer. So it's important that when you're in your learning experience, you have to make your learning experience about you and what you have to offer and what you want to bring. That is the purpose of your education. And you have to think about it. Do your teachers even understand who you are when they're coming to your class, when you come into their classroom? Do they know your background? Do they know what home you go to? Do they know where you've grown up from? Do they know what you want to be when you get older? Do they even know why you are there? But see, those are the elements that you bring with you when you step into a classroom. You bring all of your culture, all of your experience, all of your ideas, all of your thoughts with you. So it's very, very important that you make them work for you. When I was in college, there was a, um, this is the last time I was talking about I. When I was in college, I had this professor. Her name was Dr. Alice C. Jenkins. And she was a little short, red, um, gray-haired little old lady. And she was my microbial physiology teacher, gosh, whatever that means. And um, <laughs> now remember, I'm an elementary school principal, so you know, I'm way away from the science world. You know, I was there where they had one leg and one eyeball and stuff. But, <laughs> but she always said, and there were a group of us, and she always said, Winston, Donna, Michelle, and Greg, there were four of us, make your teachers teach you. And we, looking at her like, Dr. Jenkins, how do we make your teachers teach you when they are the teachers? She said, you do this. You study on your own. You come prepared to ask questions. You challenge the process of what they're offering to you. And you bring your whole best self to that classroom and make them do their job. Now think about you sitting in one of your professor's class, one of your high school teacher's class, and you're just sitting there listening at them ramble on and on and on like you're doing me right now. And you're listening to them ramble on and on and on. And you're thinking, all I need is just an A or a B. And then some of you will be like, well, if I'm lucky, I get a C. <laughs> <laughs> and then if it's really not in your major, ooh, at least a D is passing. 
but you, but you have to think through those things when you're there inside of your classroom. Now, when you are thinking in that way, and you have a professor that can come to you, or a teacher that comes to you, or an instructor that comes to you, and bring to you some of their ideas and thoughts that they really, really don't have to study for, what are you getting out of it? What challenge are you presenting to yourself? What learning are you bringing to yourself? You're cheating yourself at what you have to offer. So make sure that in every essence, that in this educational system that is built upon classification, <coughs> meaning you're going, you're going to be ESC, you can be gifted, you can be learning challenged, you can be learning disabled, you can be all of those things. And this is the only country in the entire world that classifies its students. You have to deal with people already putting you inside of a group, which is going to put some limits onto what you think you have to offer. So what you have to do is make sure that you show to them that I am more than what you have placed me on. I am more than what you think I am. Sometimes, even when, when she was I'm reading all of the stuff, when Jenna was reading all of this stuff that, that she said I had done, you know, I was, I was thinking to myself, because people will understand, I don't even keep, just as long as you don't call me anything crazy, I really do not care what it is that you call me, because my name is Winston Bishop. You know, that's what I really, really, that's what I really, really am concerned about. Titles do not make me. It is my responsibility to make the title. And that is an important thing that you have to remember. When you're in your education, and that's why I said education is not about you, it's about what you choose to do with it. And so that is an important factor. Some of you in here may be your first year coming into college, and you may have been afraid. Or you might be your first time getting ready to think about coming into college for uh, your generation. And you may be afraid of that. But what you have to understand is, not only are you afraid, but your parents may be afraid too. And if they are afraid, then you think about it. But you have to get to a point where you say, I am going to step out. I am going to step out and I am going to go to find who I am. You are the most important you that you have. In fact, you're the only you that you have. <coughs> So what are you going to do for you? And when you think on that, and you think of the experiences that you are having when you go into life, and you're going into this system, you expect <laughs> the most out of this system. Looking at it, our whole education system is focused on paradigm shifts, meaning that somebody will come in with an idea, it'll work for a moment, and everyone say, let's try this new right idea. We've gone from just teaching to testing, and now we're adding teaching, testing, and thinking. And now thinking is becoming the brand new idea in education. Imagine all of the years that we have been in learning. Now they want us to start thinking. <laughs> so what have you been doing all of the other time? What have I been doing all the other time if I didn't have to think? But that is becoming the new norm. And that is becoming the buzzword. But what you have to realize is this. When you're thinking and people are allowing you to think, you make sure you think to the maximum piece of your thinkability. That's a whole word. I'm, I'm known for making up words. So during the course of this, I might make up a word or two. But when you're going through this, education, especially through K-12, they're looking for stuff being something different. And they're trying to tap into how students can actually think through processes, how they can actually think through assessments how they can actually think through learning. Things like the Khan Academy is being used. If you've never heard of the Khan Academy, please, if you're in high school, whatever you're in college, it does not matter. Go to the Khan Academy, K-H-A-N. Go to the Khan Academy. Learn any concept you can possibly even imagine right there instructed to you. And then there are some people inside of it that we're looking at higher education. When you're looking at the shift that's happening in higher education, Think about the number of online courses that you actually have. Think about the institutions that's offering only online degrees. And when you think of that, the tradition is actually changing. And the non-tradition is actually becoming the norm. Just like all the minorities that used to be minorities at that moment are becoming the norm. They're becoming the majority in certain areas. And that's why we have to make sure that we're presenting our very, very best at what we're actually doing.
And I keep saying that because I want you to be aware that what you are getting now, and for your professor to bring you to an opportunity, and for even your coordinators, for your directors, for anyone that cares and, and appreciate and value what it is that you're getting, for them to bring you for an opportunity to even mingle, for an opportunity to even share, an opportunity to listen, that is something that you have to value. And you add that to yourself. And when you add that value to yourself, it makes you more productive for something or someone else. And that is one of the most important parts. Now, the, another buzz thing that's going around, that the entire government, where we rank 17th inside of the nation, as far as math and science is concerned, it is time for us to run towards our math and run towards our sciences, run towards our engineering. It is time to run towards them. Reason why is because when you're looking at the makeup of what engineering and science and technology is actually focused on in this, in this whole little United States of America right now, minorities only make up 5% of them. So it's very, very important. And it's even less for women. So it's very, very important. Don't be afraid of your sciences. Don't be afraid of the mathematics. If you know two plus two, you can survive. I assure you can. <laughs> But see, many of us get afraid when we do 2 plus 2 plus x. And then we start running away from it. There's no letters inside of, the, uh, inside of mathematics. <laughs> but please do not run away from them because they're needed. It is our responsibility. One thing I want to set before you is the fact that people right now, they are establishing what your norms are. Other countries are establishing what your norms are. Our educational system are based, is based upon a reactive situation. If somebody across the seas invents something, we come back and say we have to start measuring up. We always react to something. But we need to put ourselves in the position where in education, we're creating thinkers, we're creating scholars that can create that avenue where other people are wondering what it is that we're doing over here, we need to go over to learn from them. Why can't you do that for yourself? Who is limiting you to living inside of a box? Think like it's no box at all. Build your airplane in the sky Why it is flying. And when you are doing it, or however impossible it may seem, that's what you have to do. Think like it's no box at all. Because the person that designed that box designed for you to be in it. And you have to conform to everything that they want you to do in that box. But if you think like there is no box, there is no limitations to what you're able to do. One thing, I see this is going to be my last eye, I didn't tell the truth. One thing, <laughs> one thing that I had always told um, my folks when I was growing up, and I didn't grow up in the whole best, best of families in the whole world, I did not. But I did have opportunities. I was blessed with opportunities. I went to college on a music scholarship, and I played my music, and I studied my music all the way through my master's degree. I did. So I went straight on through. But I majored in science, because that's what I wanted to study. But I always told my people that my learning stopped when I started school. And it wasn't because I didn't want to do my homework or learn anything. But my learning stopped when I started having to be conformed to what people wanted to teach me. Back in the day, teachers taught you what they knew, and you didn't go beyond what they knew. So which limited what you were able to know, because they did not you go, you could not go beyond what your teacher knew. Forbid that you should think outside of a box, but now you are in a society. You are inside of an educational system in higher education. Right here at Florida Gulf Coast University, at Edison, all of these institutions right here. And you can literally think outside of the box. They're encouraging you to think like there is no box at all. The only thing that will keep us from doing it is our own personal fear. Remove that out of the way. Remove it out of the way and learn and show forth what you have to bring to the table. This generation is brilliant. You are brilliant because you access and happen and manage so much information. And in that management of information, you always try to figure out how you are going to fit inside of it. That's the value of education. And then making it fit for you. And then someone else is going to see that fit. And guess what? You're starting a shift. 
you're starting a trend. Who says that just because you mismatch your clothes, who says it's mismatched? You think about those things. Someone has sat someplace and say, this is what goes together. And everybody needs to do it like I do it. You are beyond that thinking process. You are beyond that action process. If you are still in high school, if you are still in junior college, if you are in our community college, if you are here at FGCU, you have the right, you have the responsibility, and you have the time to do it right now, to think outside bigger than where you are. That is what education needs for you to do. You push the ship. You push what's needed, and you push what is going to be. Back in uh, two weeks ago, in Naples, they had a college to, uh, they had a high school to career seminars down in Naples. And what it was, it was the actual workforce coming to tell uh, educators what they actually need from the students who are inside of education. And even though it is a good idea right now, based upon how our education system is set up, I did have personal issues with it. Because why is it that we can't create this out of this educational system students who can actually create what the future should be? Why is it that they have to tell us who are already at this point, tell us what we need to get just to the point where they are? Why not allow me to think beyond where they are at this point? And when I think in that, when you think in that essence and you're thinking in that manner, then you can begin to understand I am bigger than what they are allowing me to be. Think beyond your professors. Think outside of your professor. Now don't get F's and stuff because you try to think outside and not feel uh, conform to what your assignments are. But what I want you to do is to, is to make sure that you're thinking outside. And then you're setting yourself up for a measure of success that belongs to you. And that success feeds off into someone else. Remember I told you your education is not all about you. It's what you choose to do with it. Now, of course I have a whole lot of statistics and all of those things. But this is what I want to share with you now. There are opportunities out there for you. This is why the time is now for you. The government has allowed 50% of the income that goes to the Secretary of Labor Department for training workforce, training in any scientific, mathematics, technology, ed uh, engineering, all of those. You can train inside of it. 30% goes to the, develop to the Director of National Science and Foundation because they're offering scholarships to low-income family students. They're there. Time is now for you. 10% is available to the Director of National Science Foundation for, uh, for, to help for partnerships in K-12 institutions and schools. The time is now for you. 5% is available to uh, Secretary of Homeland Security for related petitions of certain immigrants. <laughs> the time now is for you. Think beyond yourself. And 5% is going on for decreasing the time that it takes for applications for you to become citizens of the United States of America. The time now is for you. It has been set for you. It's time for you to stand up, take your moment, think through your process, think like it's no box at all. And your achievement in education is, is not what you have gained, but how you use it to help others. Step up to the challenge, I encourage you to. When you step up to that challenge, then you will know I am here and I have made my mark. And every individual that walks the face of this earth wants to make a mark. That is why I teach, because I know for a fact that I can make my mark on someone. And when I was, when I was just so elated, and I don't know if I'm elated, but I don't know, sometimes I wonder when I go to work sometimes, because I, you know, I have a little hair, but I have to keep it black. <laughs> <laughs> But when I was sitting at my desk one day, and then the superintendent came to me and said, uh, Winston, you are going to go over to Sunshine Elementary School. I was like, I, you know, in the back of my head, I don't think that school, that school too big. I mean, give me somebody that got like 300 students, you know, where I can sit and just smile at them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but when you have 1,100 people depending on you. But the reason I wanted this job, and I appreciate it, because I can reach more people outside of myself. Because I can reach teachers who reach those students. And those students go home to reach their parents. We can reach out into the community. Think about the avenue you can create. Your education, at this point, needs to take a different direction, where you're focused on what I can be bigger than where I am right now. 
not just for personal reasons, but how can I make my mark, make my paradigm shift inside of this United States of America or of the world? Thank you all so much for your time. Sometimes, I want you to know, sometimes people are going to see something in you that you don't see in yourself. Because I was just seeing dollar signs. I was seeing doctor and dollar signs. That's all I was <laughs> but, but it wasn't for me, so I'm not going to As an administrator, because we've got a lot of intro to education students in here, what, what would you suggest, if they were coming to you on an interview, what would you suggest as an administrator? What do you look for in the teachers that you're going to hire? For the teachers that I want to hire, I'm looking for someone that's willing to learn. Uh, reason why is because if I bring in teachers that know everything, then they're going to try to show me they know everything. But if I'm willing to uh, bring in some teachers that may have experience, but willing to learn new things, because education is not anything. The way education is now, it changes constantly. And so you have to be willing to change and can't be set in your way. So that's what I'm looking for. And I'm looking for someone that actually, actually has a personality. My school has one of the greatest personalities in the whole district, I don't know how, but because I believe in having fun when I work. I honestly do. You can play, I can play with you at that moment, even with my students, if you play, if you work hard, I'm gonna let you play hard because that's part of our mission statement. We're going to have high quality performance through achievement, collaboration, commitment, and celebration. That is it. And so I'm looking for teachers who can fall in the line of knowing how to make their students love learning. Dr. Bishop, what, what, in your opinion, do you think is the biggest challenge facing you as an elementary school principal right now? Aside from budget, always a challenge every year, but what do you think is the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge, is, uh, the biggest challenge right now is getting the curriculum to actually be at a point where you can reach every child. Because what's happening is now, because I haven't seen this in my school since I've been there the last four years, because when I went there, it was, it was a totally different population. You know, the population, even in the East Zone, which is the biggest, uh, the school district is divided into zones. And in the East Zone, it's the largest of the East Zones, and you have a lot of people moving in. So you have a lot of Haitian Creole, uh, Hispanics, and whites, and blacks, all there. I have every, 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 every ethnicity that you ever possibly want, I have it there at my school. And then there are students that come not ready, who are not ex ex ready for school yet, those who do not speak English as their first language and have to even learn another language at that time and still reach the requirements of what it is. The biggest challenge that I'm having right now is making sure that I have all of the interventions in place to ensure that that child who's <coughs> not getting it will be at a point where they get it. And that is a big challenge because some of them come with a lot of attachments. But I have to tell my people, our responsibility is to teach every child like they know absolutely nothing. So don't come with preconceived notions about the child. You treat them 
just like they know absolutely nothing and you teach them as if they were your own child. And so that is, that is the challenge of actually, that's one of the biggest ones I think. And then the, the connected to that challenge, when you get in middle school, they may lose that whole essence of everything that you built in as that foundation. And then high school would probably give up. And that's been the trend that's been happening. That's why elementary schools, you just, uh, you're hopeful that when they leave, <laughs> that they fall into some place where it can be continuous. And that's what needs to happen in the educational system. <clears throat> high school people need, and middle school people need to understand the roles in education. Why not have an elementary, a middle school adopt an elementary school? So those kids can go on as a cohort to that whole entire school. They share the same ideas and thoughts. Put them in a continuous high school where they share the same ideas and thoughts. And therefore, you have a product at the end that you have seen from the very beginning all the way to the end of the education system. <coughs> that, that's just my thought. You're not telling me. I think we're way outside of everybody's problems. We had a question over here.